Yo, what is up guys? Trader Main here uh, with a quick tutorial video. Uh, this is one I've been talking about doing for a while and I've just been uh, dogging it. So i um, glad to uh, finally have a little bit of time to uh, put this thing together for y'all. Um, so if you recognize these candles, um, that's probably because you've seen a lot of, uh, you know, traders on CT using this uh, indicator, if that's what you want to call it, trading suite. Uh, guys like Flood, uh, guys like Zoran, um, guys like uh, Thinking XBT Chimp, uh, and myself, I use it uh, on occasion. So this specific indicator is called Crayons. Uh, it is... Uh, created by the in silico team. Um, so I'm sure you know who that is and he's working with flood and some other guys to put this thing together and uh, Really the purpose is uh, What they've created here is essentially a, a suite of different indicators that are uh, used to kind of add confluence to your uh, trading uh, so there's uh, a variety of different products here as you can see um, you know, there's crayons, there's uh, FSVZO, there is the adaptive fissure, there's a shitload here that you get when you buy. Uh, and uh, they were kind enough to ask me uh, to do a quick review on one of the indicators that I use that I believe adds value uh, to my trading. Uh, so I'm going to cover that here. Uh, when you sign up on the website, um, you know, you'll get access to the indicators. They'll get added to your trading view indicators tab under invite only. Uh, and on the website itself, there are uh, tutorials uh, for each of the indicators, uh, videos on them explaining how they work uh, and how you can take advantage of them. Uh, and add them to your kind of toolkit. Uh, confluence is everything in trading and the more tools you have in that tool belt of yours uh, where you can line up uh, however you trade, price action, if you're a momentum trader, if you're using things like RSI and divergence, uh, divergences, uh, there are tools in here that can kind of help sharpen that blade of yours uh, and uh, improve you. I seriously believe that. Um, this is not uh, a paid shill by any means. Uh, these are friends of mine and this is something that I use uh, in confluence with my own trading. Uh, so I'm specifically going to be covering crayons today uh, and I'm going to kind of give you the basics of how it works um, and then I will also uh, explain to you how I specifically use it because uh, I'm a price action trader. So I've actually been kind of a big proponent for a long time of no indicators and I think part of that initially was stubbornness um, but uh, over the years, I've actually started to use some indicators, not as sole uh, decision-making tools, but things to kind of add confluence to what I'm seeing in price, in market structure. And they just give me that little added confidence that, uh, you know, if all these things are lining up and I'm getting a signal from the indicator, uh, you know, that's a more high confidence uh, trade for me, a more high confidence opportunity. So really excited to go over this. It's not going to be a super long video by any means. Uh, and this is um, how I use it. Uh, there's going to be different traders uh, who use this differently than I do. Uh, it can be used on different time frames. Um, signals can be interpreted differently. And uh, at the end of the day, what you'll find with all of the tools that you see here and all of the guides and explanations is there's one thing in common and it is that it still requires discretion. Um, there is no magic solution uh, in trading where it's like every time this happens, you buy and it works 100% of the time. Every time this happens, you sell, it works 100% of the time. Or none of us would be doing this. We would all have unlimited money uh, at this point because we'd be able to just print it. Uh, it still requires discretion. It still requires you uh, to be uh, you know, the person who is making decisions based on the information provided for you, uh, to you. And these indicators help illustrate uh, information uh, in a what I believe is very intuitive way uh, and uh, yeah I'm gonna kind of quickly cover the indicator as a whole uh, and then I'll show you uh, how I use it and uh, yeah if you find this valuable and you enjoy it uh, maybe these guys can rope me into doing a, a, a tutorial on some of the other indicators uh, from suite that I use it might take me six months to a year to put it together at this rate but who knows um, so we're going to look at Bitcoin here. Um, 
To be clear, uh, I use this on Bitcoin. I use this a ton in Forex and I use this a ton in equities as well. I actually find that it works really well uh, in equities and I can even go over some examples with the S&P uh, because there are those uh, uh, you know, breaks in trading over the weekend when the markets close. I actually find you get slightly less false positives because that's still a thing um, than you do when trading crypto. Um, there are settings in here um, that you can change uh, in terms of the colors of the candles, in terms of the sensitivity of certain things. Um, I do not touch any of this. Everything I'm using is on default, just so you're aware. So uh, real quick here, uh, I've kind of listed um, what each candle coloring means. And then uh, I'll kind of try my best to describe um, you know, what action you can take based on what you're seeing in the chart. And then once I do that, I'm actually gonna show you how I personally implement crayons with my price action trading, which I think is really cool. Uh, so starting with uh, the bullish, so there's two, two kind of layers of candle coloring. There's the base candle color, uh, which is green, red, or gray. Uh, and then there is kind of like a signal layer, which is going to be uh, you know, these light blues, these kind of orange or yellow candles. Uh, and then there's the signals that go along with those, the letters above and below price. Uh, and then there's actually a pivot system built into this, which is essentially uh, the algorithm within the indicator drawing support and resistance for you. So uh, no longer do you need to watch any of my live streams or Craig's live streams on how to draw SR. Uh, this does it for you. So uh, we will start with the bullish uh the bullish section here. So the most obvious is green. Green uh, denotes that we are in an uptrend. Um, so an uptrend, you know, very commonly. Uh, and, and what I'll do here is I'll show you guys real quick. They have an entire guide here. So this is like a PDF that explains everything that I'm going to explain to you, uh, but probably in even better um, uh, uh, vocabulary than I'm able to but uh, so you don't need to worry about trying to memorize what these things do it will become second nature but there is a great PDF guide and video on the website um, so green uh, denotes an uptrend pretty straightforward right so the market uh, is bullish higher highs higher lows um, expecting bullish continuation uh, and you can also have green while going sideways and much like a moving average would work uh, or you know some sort of trend following system, even though we might be going sideways based on all the data points that the algorithm, uh, the indicator is calculating, if these candles are all still green, that could be kind of termed as like bullish consolidation based on all the data points, even though price is going sideways, uh, you know, price is still determined to be bullish, kind of like you see right here. Um, or, or defined to be bullish, excuse me. So that's gonna be kind of the most basic, um, you know, kind of signal of, you know, bullish price action, just a bright green fucking candle. Can't get easier than that. Um, so the next one I'm going to talk about here are going to be some of these blue boys, as I like to call them. Um, so these blue boys can mean a few different things. Uh, and they also, um, uh, can kind of have a different meaning depending where they are in uh, relative to price. So generally, when we see uh, a downtrend, like you see here, so price is in a downtrend here, as you can see, it's making lower lows, lower highs, we actually have price go from green to gray, uh, and then gray to red, a light blue candle, like you see here, um, this is going to be uh, an attempted uh, sign that, uh, you know, bearish price action may be um, kind of dwindling. So there might be a kind of exhaustion in terms of bearishness in price. I will not even pretend I know how any of these signals are calculated. Uh, but light blue uh, means that there's bearish exhaustion. So generally where you're going to find these candles um, is in downtrends that are potentially bottoming out. Okay. Or uh, in um, pullbacks. So while price might be trending up and then you get some sort of slight pullback, you might get a light blue candle. I'm trying to see if I can find one here live. 
Uh, I cannot, but you might get a light blue candle that's signifying that, hey, this pullback is, you know, still fine. We're still going, you know, the pullback is over. Price is going to be continuing uh, pushing upwards. But generally, the place that you'll most likely find these light blue candles, uh, it would be amazing if I could find another one here, is when price is starting to uh, potentially bottom. It is not a confirmed reversal. So if this thing gets blown through, price can just still continue down. Um, but this is bearish exhaustion, right? So we had a big downtrend, bears are getting exhausted. And then that brings us into our um, next candle right next to it here, uh, which is a weak but a reversal candle. It doesn't guarantee that we cannot you know, go further down. It doesn't mean that price is gonna instantly um, you know, charge upwards, uh, but it is an attempt uh, at a bullish reversal, right? So this is bearish exhaustion. The bears are getting tired. Supply is running out. Uh, we might be nearing a reversal, and this is an attempted reversal. So it's very common that you will see these two candles oftentimes form near each other. Not all the time, but oftentimes you will see those two candles form near each other. Uh, one saying, hey, the bears are running out of gas, and then the other candle obviously confirming uh, you know, that a potential reversal is being made. And you can see the same thing here. Downtrend, uh, bears are getting exhausted, potential reversal. We end up trading back below these candles, but as you can see, slowly after that, uh, price begins to trend upwards. So blue candle, attempted bullish reversal. Your dark blue candle, is going to be an actual reversal sign. So bearish exhaustion, attempted reversal, and then your dark blue right here, okay, is gonna be a confirmed reversal, but a weak signal. It's not like 100% this is going up, uh, but this is a strong sign that the trend is changing. You can see that here, you can see that should be able to find uh, another one at one of these lows here. There's another one right there. So you have attempted reversal, confirmed reversal. They call it a weak reversal, uh, but it is a confirmed reversal uh, nonetheless. Uh, so that would be kind of uh, a signal that, hey, now price is going to be potentially moving higher. You could use this to uh, make an, uh, uh, an attempt at a long. Right, you can use any of these blue candles as potential signals um, to enter long, to exit short positions. Let's say you're short from here, right? And then price is trading down, and then you see this, that could be your sign that's time to get out. Price is uh, starting to reverse, okay? Uh, again, discretion is required, context matters, but that's kind of the gist of what these candles mean. So, um, the dark green candle is a confirmed kind of strong bullish breakout. So that would be the indicator telling you that, okay, this has got multiple signals here uh, that we are going to be seeing a change in trend uh, and a bullish breakout. Uh, and you can see that very well illustrated in this little box of price action here. So if you look here, we've got bearish exhaustion. We've got an attempted reversal. Price is going sideways, sideways, sideways. It starts pushing down again. More bearish exhaustion, and then boom. Dark green candle, that's a bullish reversal sign. This itself could be used as a signal where once this candle closes like this, you can enter at uh, the, the um, close of the candle as your entry and the um, open of the candle as your stop. You could also use the high and low, or you could use market structure. So what you could do is say, okay, now that we've confirmed a bullish, uh, you know, kind of uptrend, a bullish reversal here, um, once a candle closes through that, that could be your signal. And then instead of having your stop here, well, I guess this would be a great stop in this instant, but you could have your stop at market structure. You don't have to use the actual candle and you don't have to use these candles at all for signals. These can just be confluence. Maybe you have an SR level that's here and then you see this happen at your key SR level. That's going to be a strong indication that that SR level 
um, is holding. And that's actually how I use these candles. And we'll get in that to in, in that in, in a bit here. So dark green, strong bullish breakout. And you can just see in price here, right? We made a low, right? Do we SFP the low? So we have a bullish swing failure pattern, made a low and then boom, broke market structure, bullish engulfing candle. Like that's just price action. And now they've colorized it for you along with some other data. Okay. Um, a, uh, the next candle is going to be the blue B. This can be one of their signal candles. So oftentimes you will see this candle, um, coupled with one of your kind of secondary candle colorings. So your primary candle colorings are green, red, and gray. Uh, your secondary are going to be these dark blues and light blues that I've been talking about. Um, so if you see a dark blue, if we remember what dark blue is, and I keep looking over here, I'm just reading my notes here that I wrote down for you guys. Weak bullish reversal signal. So this is stronger in the hierarchy of candles than the light blue, right? Because it's an actual reversal. It's not an attempted reversal like the regular blue. It's not just tired, uh, you know, kind of bearish exhaustion. It's an actual reversal symbol. And then when you get the blue B, that is actually what they consider a signal. It's a confirmed bullish reversal. So even though the reversal candle is weak, it is a confirmed reversal with this B. And again, you can use this as an entry, right? So if you have your uh, candle close as a blue here, you could enter on the next candle, stop below here, right? And then maybe you ride this until it gives you a signal to get out. We'll get into these bearish signals here in a second, but this would be a couple of clues that, hey, this might be rolling over, but you've caught some of this move here. So part of the reason that this is more of an add-on necessarily than a complete, this is all you need to trade system, at least for me, is using this um, you can maybe stay in trades longer, right? So you get the signal to get long or maybe you're long from here, right? And then you're like, oh, are we topping out here? I don't know. Then you see this. Okay, it's got more juice in it. Maybe I'm going to roll, bring my stops up, right? Uh, and then you see something like this. Okay, maybe it's time to take some profit off the table to take your stops up. So there's lots of ways that you can use this uh, to kind of add confluence to what you're already doing. But uh, that is a confirmed bullish reversal and again you'll oftentimes see it happen with those other colored candles uh, the bullish colored candles right so uh, an attempted reversal weak reversal confirmed reversal boom enter off this candle maybe you put your stop at the low maybe you put your stop at the most recent market structure and now where are you targeting well if you're targeting based on pa and you're entering here i'm probably targeting here and here uh, but with this, like, so maybe I'm going to take my entire trade off here, right? Because I ran this high. Well, according to crayons, this trend is still going until it gives me a signal. Okay, now trend might be shifting, but then we continue to get strength. I mean, this thing continues to fly. We'll get into that kind of towards the end, but this can be used to kind of stay in trades longer, know when to take profit. So again, this could be a perfect long signal we also have an sr flip of a pivot we'll get into the pivots in a bit that's from over here so multiple pieces of confluence the blue candles as well as the blue b confirming the bullish reversal um the u is a bullish market structure shift let's see if i can find one of those here um Probably would have been smart to uh, find all these examples in advance, but that's not nearly as fun. Again, perfect example of how to use all of those bullish candles I just talked about. So we're in a downtrend here. Price is trading down, 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 right? Bearish exhaustion, attempted reversal, attempted reversal, reversal, weak reversal, but then boom, confirmed. And then you can see after that, look what happens. The candle starts switching green. Right, and then boom, you ride it up. Maybe you're exiting here. If you're entering on this candle here, right? Maybe you're stopped out. If your stop's right there, maybe your stop goes here. Again, I don't use this to enter the trade. I use this for confluence. But you can use these candles as signals to actually get in at the tr get into the trade. Uh, where can we find a green U? Can we find a green U? Here we go. So a green U, 
okay, is a bullish market structure shift. And this is not gonna be the same type of market structure shift that you see with your naked eye, right? Where you have, okay, we're in a downtrend and then boom, bullish market structure. That, you know, is a bullish market structure shift. This is gonna sense that with, again, all the data and information that this algorithm and indicator collects and calculates and spits out this candle, it might be something on the lower time frame. It's gonna be multiple different conditions together uh, that it is going to be generating this U. I mean, for me, this lines up perfectly with, hey, we took out this swing high, bullish market structure shift. And again, this is a signal candle here. So we have a green U, the candle flips green. You can do the exact same thing, right? You can enter based on the open and the close, the high and the low. You could enter based on once price prints that, once we close above it, right? Treat it as SR, right? If we start trading below it, the signal might fail, start trading above it and holding. Good chance it continues. Could put your stop here, could put your stop down here. Uh, again, this is a signal candle. You don't have to enter based on just the candle itself. Uh, and these things do sometimes give false positives. Perfect example is right here, right? So you had, uh, you know, attempted reversal, confirmed reversal with the dark blue candle, and then we traded down. We'll get into what those false positives can be in, in a moment here. Um, and uh, last but not least is the actual red W. So, and why I mean, why I have this under the bullish section on the chart here is because when price is trending up, okay, I want to find a strong uptrend. Okay, when price is trending up, like it is here, we're in an uptrend here, and you get the W, oftentimes this could mean weakness in the bull trend, okay? So this is potential indecision, potential weakness. As you can see, price continues to truck up here. So the way that I use this, again, context is everything, discretion still matters. Just because you get a W, it doesn't mean close all your trades, right? You gotta remember, this is very clearly an uptrend. You have a bullish signal here, a bullish signal here, and then to me, the way that I treat this as bullish is if we're in an uptrend and we get a W and then price blows through it, that to me is actually a strong signal for continued strength. And it's the reverse in a downtrend, right? So if we get one of these bullish signals in a downtrend, right? Like imagine we're in a downtrend here, we get this bullish signal and then price does this. That actually to me shows extra strength towards the downside because it invalidated the signal. So that is how this W is bullish to me. If you have a red W appear in an uptrend, it can mean weakness in the potential trend. So maybe keep your eye out for a potential reversal. It's not a sign to exit all positions. Uh, but if we actually blow through it, that means to me at least this trend is very strong and I'm gonna stick with it. So that's all of the green signals. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Again, all of this stuff is listed on the website. You can rewatch this video if necessary. Uh, and I am gonna go into an example of how I use this shortly. Uh, we'll quickly cover the bearish uh, uh, candles next. Uh, no one likes the bearish candles, but unfortunately they are important. We do gotta pay attention to them. Uh, so the most obvious one is just the red candles. This is the exact opposite of the green candle. This means, you know, bearish, uh, price action, we're in a downtrend. Um, w, right, in a bear trend actually means, you know, weakness uh, from the bulls. So as you can see here, we're in a downtrend, we have a little bit of a push up, we get this red W, this means that there is, you know, kind of rejection happening, weakness on the bull side. Uh, so again, and you can see shortly after we end up getting another bear signal here, we continue to push down. Right, and this is again, the exact opposite is what I just explained on the bull side, right? We're in an uptrend, you get a W, we blow through it, price is gonna continue much higher. But in a downtrend, generally the W means continuation for me, right? So if we're in a downtrend, and you can see that perfectly right here. In a downtrend, getting the W, even though it's kind of consolidating a bit, this is weakness, we're in a downtrend, we're in bearish price action, continuation to the downside. Uh, and again, you can see a perfect example of what I was talking about with a signal invalidation, right? So we have a gre dark green candle here, right? 
strong bullish breakout. The next candle is red, completely engulfs that candle, and then it prints a W. To me, that is a sign that uh, the bears are actually quite strong here because uh, it invalidated that bull signal and we're gonna have probably strong continuation uh, to the downside, okay? Um, H is a potential top. Uh, the way I treat H's is their potential swing highs, right? So it's not every time it's gonna be a swing high, uh, but that's what it will denote, right? Potential swing highs, you can see that worked obviously super well there. Potential swing high right there. Uh, there are instances where it's wrong, but I mean, again, this is a swing high. We end up trading higher, right? But this is telling you uh, that the market uh, is potentially, um, you know, looking to uh, put in a top or it has, uh, you know, it's suggesting that there's, you know, failures uh, for uh, price to push higher. H is very simple. It means high, right? It's put in a high. Um, red, uh, a dark red candle. Sorry, we're not on that yet, excuse me. Um, the um, yellow candle here is the opposite of the aqua candle, okay? So this candle uh, is the opposite of, of uh, the light blue candle. Where can we find one where they're near each other for ease of vision? We're not gonna get one, are we? There we go, okay? So this here, these are the opposing signals. This is bearish exhaustion. This is bullish exhaustion. So if you're riding along all the way up here, this could be a profit taking candle. Um, this could be, uh, you know, hey, tighten up your stops type of candle. And as you can see, it ended up leading to a large pullback here. So this is the uh, essential, essentially the opposite of that light blue aqua candle, okay? Um, what do we got next here? Um, D is the opposite of U, right? So I showed you that U that was like, okay, we're going up, price is moving up. Um, D is the exact opposite. I think you'll see one here on the uh, three day, no? Weekly, no, let's see. I know there's one of these time frames that has it. There you go. So the D is the exact opposite of this. Okay. Uh, so that is just a signal of you know a bearish market structure shift. In this instance, we broke a swing low, just like in this instance, we broke a swing high. Uh, but it's calculating you know other stuff, other data, and it's saying you know something that you might not be able to see uh, you know with your uh, eyes that you know price is going to likely uh, push down further, it's a downward move in market structure, pull out your, uh, you know, drawing tool, you could again, enter, this is your entry, your stop is here, here, or even here. Uh, and maybe you hold this until you get uh, a confirmed reversal like this or a potential reversal like this. Right? So this is another signal candle, it represents bearish market structure shift, uh, the D, uh, this purple kind of looking candle, uh, is the opposite of um, the uh, very uh, dark green candle. So the D is the opposite of the U, and then the kind of purple candle here uh, is gonna be the opposite of the dark green uh, breakout candle uh, that I was showing you earlier on the bull side. Again, I'm just gonna scroll around like a madman trying to find it here. There you go. So the purple candle is the opposite of this, right? Purple candle is the opposite of this. And then that D that I was showing you there, the actual D that was showing up on, I believe the six hour is the opposite of the U, okay? And again, just like on the bull side, when you have a D with a purple candle, that's a strong downward bearish signal. D meaning bearish market structure, purple meaning you know a strong bearish breakdown. Same as having the B under a dark green or a dark blue candle being a stronger signal. This here is a stronger buy signal than this with the gray candle because it has the layering of signals, the candle color and the signal candle with the B. Um, the the uh, B underneath price is the opposite of the B 
overpriced, right? So be overpriced or below price was a, you know, kind of bullish pivot, confirmed bullish reversal. This is the exact opposite, a bearish pivot. Okay, so uh, that is covering kind of all of the candle covers other than gray obviously means just sideways, no discernible trend up or down. So how can you use this? Well, first of all, I'll actually quickly explain the false positives, right? So in an uptrend, if you get a bearish signal here uh, and then price blows through it, usually that to me denotes further strength in the other direction. Uh, same thing here, right? You get a bearish down and you get the purple candle, but then price blows through it. To me, that means the uptrend is really strong. And it goes the same in the other direction as well. We gotta go way back to find some bearish shit because Bitcoin is just so bullish. Um, let's see here, probably can find something in here. Um, let's see if I can find a good one. Yeah, right here. Very strong downtrend, right? We have a buy signal occur in a strong downtrend. Price completely negates the buy signal within the next two candles. And you can see we see another large drive lower. So that's strength in the downtrend, just like it's the opposite. If you see a bear signal in an uptrend like this and price invalidates it quickly, generally that's a sign that there's strength in the direction of that trend. So again, all of these letters, candle colorings and stuff, they're great for following trend. They can actually give you setups if you wanna use them for that. Uh, they can be great for trade management, knowing when to cut along or to you know, potentially tighten up your entries, um, things or stops, excuse me, based on you know, if you're in a long and you're getting a lot of you know, bearish exhaustion or bullish exhaustion signals, that can be a sign to take some profits, move your stops, things like that. Um, so great system, I think it's relatively simple to understand. It will take you a little bit of while, a little while to get used to all the candle colorings, but I think they're pretty straightforward to be honest with you. Um, and uh, there's also a SR system built in and on top of all that trend following signals that it gives you it has its own SR system uh, that it will give you. I'm not, again, I don't know how they're calculated, but what you'll see first when a pivot is forming is you'll see these little lines. And that means that price, they believe price, the algorithm, they uh, believes that, you know, this is an area that is sensitive to price, okay? And you can see it start with those little dots. And then what will happen is it will draw it out as, as price continues to progress. These thing, this thing does not repaint. So if I go here, you'll actually see, see how it starts like this? And then as price continues, the pivot starts to extend out in time. And it, it won't extend all of them, right? If there's a new pivot in place of this one, this one stops extending, okay? And this one takes over. And what you'll see here is this works as support and resistance. If we're above it, it might be support. If we're below it, it might be resistance. And I don't need to tell you if this was a relevant level or not. You'll find out right now, right there. So that pivot from over here ended up being the top here. And so it will automatically extend the first it will form the pivot and then it will extend it out until there's a new pivot form that kind of supersedes this one it's dynamic support and resistance they work awesome uh, and uh, to me it's a very helpful uh, tool whereas it's very easy to kind of get lost just looking at the candle colors uh, but again just like I'm, I'm going to explain how I use this if you have a candle signal form at one of these pivots that might be a high probability a signal so you can see um, this one if I want to extend it out myself here right acted is a very nice kind of SR level it started here soon as we got above this level we started trending up right and so this is uh, this is the signal for it starting to get formed these little lines above and then it will draw it out and another example right here right pivot is forming perfect SR right there multiple touches it ends up touching it here as well and look, if you even extend this out, it's the top of this as well. So it's like dynamic SR, whatever the hell you wanna call it. Uh, and uh, you can use it to actually enter trades, right? So if this is a pivot where price is now turned down, well, would this not be a potential area to get long on a retest? Okay, and so you, I, I highly suggest you fool around with this thing, back test, forward test, using the signals, using the SR levels, and this works on multiple timeframes. Um, 
personally, I think to get the, 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 the least amount of kind of, you know, false positives and things like that uh, is to use it on the higher time frames. So the daily, you know, the H4, the six hour, the 12 hour, uh, I think those are going to give you really good signals Like you were having, you had a killer long here, for example, on the H4. So we were bottoming out and then look, you get bearish exhaustion, you get an attempted reversal, you get bullish market structure break, confirmed reversal you're getting long in there and I'm going to show you how this lines up with something that I do in a second here, right? So this is, and now look, maybe we're taking some profit here because right into an SR level, right? That pivot from over here, we're getting some bullish exhaustion, right? So I highly suggest you mess around with this thing, try it on different time frames. It works great. Uh, and you can use it on the low time frames as well for scalping. And I'm going to show you now how I actually uh, use this. So I, as you guys know, am an order block donkey. And so what I will do is I will look for price action signals that I would use to enter a trade. Okay. And then if they line up with um, a crayon signal, that to me is a kind of high probability trade that I want to get involved in. So here, on the bull side, we have a bullish daily swing failure pattern that closes right here, okay? And we have a bullish daily order block. This is a long for me as is, but if you throw on the crayons, look what you get right at that order block. You get that confirm or that attempted bullish reversal candle. And then if I zoom in, Right where my order block and SFP happen, I get this trio of signals. So if I'm entering this as an SFP, I now have the confluence of the daily order block, the daily SFP, the crayons signals, and then on the H4, I have my breaker entry right here. The up candle that caused the SFP, you're buying on a retest right here, right? Or after the candle closes up here, stop goes here. This is exactly the setup I went over in my stream and where was I targeting? That daily order block, right? But confluence of all my price action, daily swing failure pattern, daily order block, H4 breaker, and on top of it all, I get the crayons buy signal right at that area. Where am I taking profit? Well, I'm taking profit at my daily bearish order block, right? That's where my take profit was. Look what happens on crayons right at that level, a bearish SFP and a bullish exhaustion candle. That's all I need. Now I have all of my price action pieces of the puzzle, bearish order block, bearish SFP, um, and a bearish crayons candle, potential top candle to say, okay, the trend might be weakening here. So this just adds extra confidence that my take profit was a good take profit. And as you can see, you know, we've dropped, you know, a couple percentage points right off of this level. So I, you know, it doesn't look like much here, but you know, this is, uh, uh, this is $2,000 that price has dropped since hitting my take profit level. Uh, and giving me the crayon signal stacked with my price action signals. And I do this all the time and I'll even do it sometimes like a complete degen on the super low time frame. So let me just get all of that shit back here for a second. Okay, so I have my H4. I have my H4 stuff here, right? What I can do is, I'm gonna just delete this. I don't need this right now. I'm going to delete this daily order block and I'm going to go into the H4 here. I'm going to mark out the H4 breaker. Okay. Actually, sorry. This is the breaker. You can go even lower right now. I'm going down to the 15 minute. What do I have here? I have a refined order block on the 15 minute, right? There's your breakout. It doesn't give you the perfect retest, but you can buy in this consolidation. Do you think I'm gonna get a crayon signal? This is that daily SFP here, okay? This is that H4 and daily order block in here. So I'm a bull. From a price action perspective, I'm a bull down here looking for longs because this H, this SFP closed bullish. Throw on crayons and look what I get. I get an uptrend signal here, right? I get a attempted bullish reversal signal here. 
I get a bearish exhaustion signal here. So in the area that my price action is telling me to look for longs, I'm getting a bunch of confluent signals from crayons to also look for longs, right? So again, it's not enough for me just to enter based on this candle, right? At least how I trade. But when I have this candle combined with all the things I'm looking for from a price action perspective, that gives me a setup. Or not gives me a setup, excuse me, that gives me extra confident confluence in the setup that I'm looking for already. So um, I think this is a great system. I think it's well worth the money. Uh, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's very well put together. The resources on the website uh, do a great job explaining how all of these things work. And there's other tools in the toolkit, uh, you know, that I'm not even showing you here that I can use in confluence with the uh, crayon system itself to give you even another kind of, um, you know, trigger or signal that yes, you are looking at the right thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, combine all that together still requires discretion. Um, you know, you can get some added confidence uh, and confluence to the stuff you're already looking at in price action, however the hell you trade. Uh, I think it does a great job. Uh, I'll show maybe one more example here um, of where this gave you a great long opportunity here. So we have a daily bullish order block here, okay? This is a long signal for me just as is. I could long this with my stop below here. Generally, I'm not entering like that. I'm going to the lower time frame and I'm looking for a lower time frame trigger, right? Because it's going to give me some sort of um, tighter risk reward. Uh, so I would refine that daily order block into this H4 breaker. So now instead of having my stop way down here, right? I have my stop here, right? Or maybe below this low, but I can get tighter risk reward. My area of entry is tighter. Um, now, what do you think will happen, right? And we ran these lows here, ran these lows, right? So, I mean, it's not an SFP, but we ran below this low, right? Got back above. So to me, this is still a breaker, uh, even though it wasn't kind of your perfect SFP, it doesn't have to be, right? We ran that low, we got back above. What do you think happens if I throw on crayons here? So at my area of interest, okay, we're getting what? Price is starting to give me potential bullish signals, right? Attempted bullish reversal, attempted bullish reversal here. The trend goes from gray and red candles to green candles, right? Zoom in even more. And you get, again, confirm bullish reversal, right? Buying is stepping in here. Again, this is not enough for me to just enter, um, you know, on the trade, but it's confluence, right? It's added pieces to the puzzle. Is this area I'm looking at going to hold as support? Well, if we're in a downtrend and then we start getting a bunch of bullish crayons indicators at that SR level, to me, that's added confluence to maybe enter the trade. Right, and then at my entry point, right, forget about here, at my entry point, what do I get? So I'm not entering here, right? This is where the breakers originate, originated from. At the entry, you get bearish exhaustion, attempted bullish reversal, uptrend, strong bullish trend reversal, and then you're off to the races. So again, that's just another example of within the context of a price action setup, I'm actually getting confluent signals from the indicator that uh, where I'm looking might actually hold as SR. You even gotta be here on the actual um, three hour chart here. So again, you're gonna wanna refine and figure out what time frames this works best for you at. Um, you know, looking at price right now, right? Looking at the three day, we're getting signs of, you know, bullish exhaustion. So what would be bearish, right, is if price then put in some sort of high time frame red candle, right, like this here. That would probably denote having another leg down. But if price comes up and closes through this candle, to me that actually tells me that I think we're gonna have a strong continuation in price because we've invalidated this potentially bearish signal. 
So again, the long and short of it, I know they said this would be a long video and ended up being 40 minutes. Um, I think this thing is great. The team is great. Um, I think it's worth it. I think it adds value even to a trader like me who uses price action. I've just given you a couple quick examples of how this can uh, you know, be beneficial to you. And I'm talking like you can completely degen this shit if you really want to, okay? So we're on the three day chart here. You see how we have a perfect 70.5 touch here. Big time bullish signals here. Well, look what happens if we get real crazy. It's gotta be a better way, man. It's gotta be a better way to find out where the hell I'm going. It's not gonna show me, is it? There we go, okay. How low can I go? 15 minute. Okay, so within that three day fib pull, okay, right at, right at the 70.5 touch, okay? Look what we get here. We get a strong bullish breakout candle right at the touch here. So I will sometimes when I'm scalping, right? If I'm looking to enter like a scalp trade based on us being bullish, I will actually use crayons or bearish, doesn't matter. I will use crayons on the super low time frame and actually find uh, that oftentimes if I'm looking for you know a long, I will get the confluence on the one minute chart of a um, you know potential reversal. Let's see if I can find an example here and then I'll end the video because this is going way too far, way too long. Okay, here we go. Pull up, right? I'm I'm scalping a long here because you know we're leading in bullish, let's say. There you go. So right into our fib pull, we get our six point six two tap, and then what do we get to confirm our bias? Even though this is super low time frame, you get the bullish reversal signal candle. Right, you get the combination of the blue candle as well as the blue bee. So I'm not suggesting you use this thing purely on the one minute. Personally, I prefer it on the high time frame. Like I said, it works really well for equities as well uh, and for four X. Right, so you can see, um, you know, weakness denoted here. We're bearishly uh, invalidating these long signals. That's a sign of you know bearishness. Uh, or potential strength in the downtrend, excuse me, right? We have a little bit of a sell us here, attempted reversal, bearish exhaustion, attempted reversal, confirm reversal, and then boom, this is equities, right? From here to here, right? From here until you get a bear candle here, right? That's a hundred points. That's a big move in equities. A hundred points is a lot in equities. This is the 12 hour chart, right? So this thing works great. Uh, in equities as well. Again, huge sell off, bearish exhaustion, attempted reversal, confirmed reversal, big move up. So, this is, and you have an SR flip, right? We're below the pivot, we close above the pivot with a signal, right? Add that with your entry technique that you might use. So, lots of value to be had here. Uh, Bitcoin's looking a little weak, eh? Uh, lots of value to be had here. Uh, I highly recommend it. If you have any questions about it, feel free to ask me. Uh, but uh, I apologize for taking so long to put this video out. I will be doing an entry techniques video some point in the near future. I know I've been promising that for what feels like ever. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed the video. I will leave details to how to access the indicator uh, in the description. If you got any questions, like I said, you can shout out, give me a shout out, give Flood a shout out. Uh, and yeah, hope you enjoyed.